So we've come to this area where we're under a huge highway that goes through this neighborhood. Some of the houses are well, like built there. That. The highway is inside a room there. Uh, so we're going into some of the more dangerous areas now. Apparently it's best to bike through these areas so you can get away quickly if anything happens. What's the tattoo on your head represent? These guys all sitting in the gutter here are doing something called Paco. This is the Asuna is how drugs make him forget about any troubles. So we've arrived at this local couple's house. We have to go up these stairs right up to the top and then we're going to see the, the living conditions here. Poco de agua, luz, no, no pagamos. No, no, they don't pay Pero... rain, they don't pay water services or any electricity services. They don't pay anything. El de la banco es, eh, viene... He used to rob Rob bank. Thanks. Thanks. Today we're going to be venturing into one of the most notorious neighborhoods in the whole of Argentina. This neighborhood has been labeled many times in the past as the most dangerous place in the whole of the country. So let's go and see what it's like inside and see how dangerous it truly is. Whether he's done in prison, the highest inflation. We went with machine guns and they robbed the banks. Welcome to Buenos Aires, capital city of Argentina, of course. Massive city, mega city, 15, 16 million people. Absolutely huge. Great to be here. Wanted to come here for a long time. Today we're going to an interesting neighborhood called Villa 31. It's supposed to be quite the notorious neighborhood. Huge sprawl, barrios next to the skyline. Been told it's quite dangerous, one of the more on edge parts of this massive city. Going to be quite careful in here, but also hopefully go quite deep. Meet some interesting people. Let's go have a look. Okay, so we're here with Lenny. A lot of Hi. you guys might remember Lenny from Venezuela a few years ago. And so now we're in Buenos Aires, right Lenny? Yeah, finally you came here, man. We're going to walk here today into the Villa 31. Okay, and what it's, kind of a neighborhood is this? It's a main slum here in the, in the capital. I really wanted to know how it is inside. I want to know how it's a problem. Really exciting of going inside there. It's a very crowded place where everything or a lot of things is happening all the time. A lot of bad situations could yeah. happen here, no? Many yeah. local people wouldn't ever go in here, right? If you don't have anything there to see or if you don't know anybody there, you don't have anything to do there. I mean, yeah. you are not going to walk there with no intentions. And yeah. You need someone there to guide you or, right. yeah, because it's easily dangerous. they can recognize that you are not from the place. That's what I hear, okay? I never had gone, maybe, it's like working another place here in, in, in Buenos Aires right. and it would be a surprise. So we've met a man here, Matias. So you're living outside this restaurant here? He has a trouble in childhood, a, a, a hard childhood. So from, chil from the children, he has been uh, in, in this situation, living outside in the streets. Would you mind telling us what happened in your childhood? Well, it happens to everything. What, whatever, anything. Parents living him alone. Abandoned. He was abandoned. Okay. And do people just give you food here? Y la comida donde la consigues? Te la da la gente. Te la da la gente. Y los restaurantes te ayudan. No. Nunca. People give him some food. Uh, restaurant. Restaurant. Uh, he, the, he's talking about the police. Show the police. Uh, the police sometimes kid him wherever he. He sustains, so it's kind of difficult for him to to be in this situation. Are there a lot of people around here using drugs? Paco. Paco, no, look at my child. Yeah, he used a drug here called Paco. Oh, he uses it. Yeah, he, he um, this is, it's very cheap for what I hear. And that's like a cocaine derivative, it's right? Like waste product of waste cocaine. Waste production from, from propane. What does Paco make you feel like? <laughs> Drugs make him forget about any troubles he has. I mean, he feels fine and he can forget by a, for a moment about any bad situation or the situation he's living right now. How is he treated by the general public? 
Está muy bueno. Esto es amiga, ella es amiga. Ah, es su amigo. Es su amigo. Es su amigo. Es su amigo. Hay personas que tratan a él bien, otras, obviamente, tratan a él mal. Ok, Matías, muchas gracias. Un buen provecho. Gracias por la entrevista. Ok, así que hemos llegado a la entrada de esta neighborhood que vamos a ir. Puedes definitivamente sentir la atmósfera empezando a cambiar un poco. Es un poco sketchy a veces. Hemos conocido a nuestro guía local de la neighborhood y no quiere estar en cámara en todo el mundo. So uh, yeah, he's going to be showing us around, but he says if I tell you to stop filming, stop filming. Anyway, let's go inside. So all these cables are run off the main line and they just hijack the power so nobody pays for electricity here. So we've come to this area where we're under a huge kind of highway that goes through this neighborhood. The government, I think, has been working on trying to develop it to make it a bit more safe because some of the uh, building practices here aren't the best. So you can see on the other side of this fence, I can't get really any closer, but you can see the huge cages on these buildings here. I've been told not to go up in there and film because I asked if I could go and get some closer shots, but they said there's some guys there that don't want to be on camera. I've never seen cages like that in all the places I've been in the world, all kinds of different neighborhoods, and I've never seen quite such high security. So this used to be houses so and the government came and tried to make it a bit more like functional yeah, there's not. a football pitch and yeah. they move some houses but you can still see like some of the houses are well, like built there that. maybe these the highways is inside a room there uh, someone who's lived there I don't know but you can see how the highs the houses are cut there I mean they remove the some some walls and some uh, spaces to create all this space they just did this because they want to remove the people who live behind uh, below the highway it must be highway. very loud in like a room like well, this well i can't eh? imagine how we could be living there and have all the cars passing all the time i hope they don't have a, uh, a, a crash near there or some car transpassing the fence to the to inside the house yeah right, so now we're going for a bit of a motorbike ride through the uh, neighborhood all right so we're going into some of the more kind of dangerous areas now but uh, it's best not to uh, walk through there apparently it's best to bike through these areas so you can get away quickly if anything happens these guys all sitting in the gutter here are doing something called paco which is like a cocaine derivative like a cheap cocaine but it's super sketchy they're making pipes out of old scraps of metal smoking off cans it's quite blatant i have to try and be discreet with this camera but you can see just met one of our guide's friends and uh, he's jumped on a motorbike and he's gonna do some wheelies for us. see here some of the newer style houses the government have helped build basically just corrugated iron with concrete block so we've arrived at this local couple's house we have to go up these stairs right up to the top and then we're going to see the, the living conditions here Hola. Nick. Buenos días. Nick. Nick. Eh, Nick. Your daughters are inside. La diosa de mi hijo. Oh. Sí. No. no. Nice place. It's two bedrooms. Tienes dos cuartos acá. Eh, el de mi hijo y el otro más. Sí. Tres habitaciones. Tres. Ah, oh, she has three sí. rooms. Okay. Tampoco de agua, luz, no, no pagamos. No, no, they don't pay pero... rent, they don't pay water services or any electricity services. They don't pay anything. Sí. Did she build the house herself? She bought it. Oh, she bought the house. She, so she bought the house. Used to pay rent and now. She used to pay rent, it. but now the she is the owner of the place. Can I ask the price? Casi como cincuenta mil dólares. Fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars. Wow. Must so have taken have... a long time to save up. Siete años Seven ahorrar. Years for saving all this. Seven years. She was earning like. 
like one thousand dollars at, at that time. So she, she had the opposite. Yeah, a month. One thousand dollars. It was a lot of money. Yeah. That's so much money. A lot. The main room, I guess. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. Okay, Lenny, we've come into a local house here and we've met a lovely lady, Maria. How is life living here? Maria is uh, from Bolivia. She has been living here from, from 20 years ago. Life here at the beginning was kind of hard, but it has been transforming into something better. So was it quite dangerous here a few years ago? It was dangerous, but with the years, the safety sensation has grown, so she feels that he can live here without and feeling insecure. Can you tell us more of the specifics of what the danger was? This kind of trouble in between criminals, sometimes some other people came here to look for some guy, specific guy, and mm -hmm. say, of course, there are this kind of confrontation uh, with guns. Kind of dangerous sometimes, but just like other, any, uh, any, other, any other place in, in Argentina. That still happens? Yeah, especially when criminals are drunk, using mm -hmm. drugs or alcohol problems. Why did you leave Bolivia? She wants another opportunity for her. Situations there were bad. She is a mother of two. She left her partner because of violent situations with, with him. Her so, partner was violent towards her. Yeah, she told me that she studied food technology in the university in Bolivia, but yeah. she couldn't finish the university. Right now, she's trying to get into work as a bartender, but she needs food manipulation workshop. It's a requirement that the company is asking her to, to do these right. papers for, for working with this. Muchas gracias. Para ustedes. Buenísimo. Gracias, María. Un placer de visitarte acá. Gracias, señor. Chao. Thank you. Ven. Thank you. Thank you. Este es la Argentina, mira. Levanta. This is a traditional Argentinian barbecue asado. They they used to do this every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They gather and they share all this beautiful meat. The the Argentinian meat is so good. I really really love it. Look at this. Este es vacío. Vacío. Never missing, uh -huh. never missing the beer. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, se conoce. Se conoce. Ah, que no, 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 no. I like it, I like it. Very nice. How is life here? ¿Cómo es la vida aquí en el barrio? ¿Ustedes son del barrio? Sí. ¿Y a ustedes les gusta que es bueno, no? No, sí. Sí, tranquilo, ¿no? Esto, esto, es, la, esto es la vida de nosotros. They play football together and they gather for, for this meeting because of football. Football unites a lot of people here. And uh, well, they say that they like to live here and they are happy living here. So. so a lot of the people who were living underneath that bridge were given an opportunity by the government to move into some of these houses. They had to pay for it a little bit, but the government subsidized. So you can see these cage buildings here, uh, a big upgrade from those brick buildings right underneath the highway. Honestly speaking, in Brazil, Venezuela, Haiti, I've never seen such harsh security in a slum or a barrios or a favela. Okay, so we've met a local man, Alejandro, who owns a business here, right? Yeah, Alejandro lives before below the highway uh -huh. and he was relocated here to these buildings. He owns this place. Did the government help pay for the move from underneath the bridge? He got some help from the government when they had to move. I asked him about how he feels living here in this new part. He has more clients there over inside, there. over yeah. there. The shop is moving, it's working, but not like it was before when he was inside. Why did the government <laughs> knock down those buildings? No, porque supuestamente no podía haber gente viviendo bajo la autopista. The government says it was a risk to live below the building, below, below the, the bridge, but there are still people living there. He says that never happens to anyone there while they were living below the bridge. The bridge for him, it wasn't a risk. And are you happy with the current state of Argentina? Economic, más que en todo. Pero bueno, uno tiene que seguir para adelante, viste. The current situation here with the economic problems. What can we do? Had to live with this government ruling, but at the end, they just have to work, 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 and more work. There is nothing else that they can do. He has his family, so he has to to work. Like just like anybody else here living, I mean, you uh -huh. have to do whatever you have to do 
to 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 put your family and be and be happy with your family. This neighborhood I've heard from Argentinians it's known to be a bit dangerous. Would you say that's true or how do you feel? Is el, it safe? Se dice mucho de la Villa 31 que es un lugar peligroso. ¿Tú crees que eso es verdad o es mentira? Siempre cuidándose, nunca nunca regalándose, pero claro. siempre te cuida y todo eso. Yes, you have to be aware, and like any other places you visit. I mean, you have to be careful with your stuff, your, your phone. Don't don't walk with your phone or your camera, just like we are doing right. <laughs> muchas gracias, Alejandro. Gracias, muchas gracias por todo. Gracias a ustedes. So, Lenny, how does the rent or the ownership of these houses work? Well, for what I hear, uh, if you want to rent. It's complicated because they just want to rent, the owners just want to rent here to long people. I mean, if you have some children, they don't, they won't rent you because they don't, it's a problem to take you out after you rent. Oh, okay, who, who so love, who, if who a family when, rents and they're protected by the government. Yeah, okay. so if you have children, it's complicated to rent here. Uh -huh. The rent is about 30,000 pesos. I about. guess it's something I heard is pretty cheap. If you want to buy a house here, well, you buy, but you don't have any paper. Because a lot of these houses are illegally built, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the, these people has no paper owner work. paper. Yeah, yeah, so you can buy, but you don't you don't have anything that says that it's your only yeah. that if you live there, that's your place. Yeah. So here is the Bomberos. We're here with Javier, who's a local fireman here. And here's the local fire station. station. And it's actually just two shipping containers stacked on top of each other. Are there a lot of fires in this neighborhood? Hay muchos incendios aquí en la zona. Sí, tenemos tenemos incendios, tenemos mucho más. Es, they had eh, some fires in the village sometimes, but what they really had more is people who falls from who fell from the from the houses. There are a lot of people every time. They had to go as an emergency, bring people that fell from the floors. And how often do people fall? Two or three, sometimes. A day? A day. Oh, wow. Yeah. And what do you do with people, like, when you pick them up? They give people the first aids. If they don't need to take it to the hospital, they bring it here. They have this health uh, center there. Okay. You know, they need to be transported to the hospital. They call services, ambulance services. There's lots of cables which look not the best job in terms of the electricity. Does that sometimes cause fires? In Amba, in Amba, tanto como en verano, Mm, por el uso de los aire especially in winter and in summer in summer because a lot of air conditioner are turned on so it hits um, the, the, the connection the cable mm -hmm. connection you see that this a, a spider net there of electricity cables and they heat and well, of course they explode is there a lot of crime in this neighborhood from your perspective acá tenemos gente que vive en el en el barrio y gente caso mío que vive a 40 kilómetros de acá this is like any other places in in argentina we had walk here and we felt comfortable he feels the same the first time he arrived here he feels afraid of what to expect here but at the end now he feels safe here he come from a place that is 40 minutes away so he doesn't live here so he has to come here and work and he feels that the people is very good with them so why does this neighborhood have such a bad reputation does he think por los años atrás le quedó esa the perspective outside comes from the first years of the of the village of the barrio of the neighborhood because it used to be dangerous before okay. but now they feel like it's, it changed. I mean, that they, they try to urbanize. Uh -huh. and people are trying to live in more dignity, I okay. guess, right? So it has transformed the, the, the neighborhood from what it was before. Muchas gracias, señor. No, por favor. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Okay, so we're here with Drubing, who's been hanging out with us all day. We met him at the start yeah. of the day and he kind of came along and hung out. You're a homeless man, is that correct? Vivo en la calle, sí. Vivo en la calle hace cuatro años. Estoy en la calle por situación de que... He has been living since four years ago on the streets. He has some difference with, their, with his family. So, well, he has to 
move and, and start living on the streets. En cualquier vereda o en cualquier eh, reparo, pero es fría la calle cuando no tienes manta. Por it's hard no... living in the streets because it's cold sometimes, especially in winter. What's the tattoo on your head represent? Bueno, de, de la mujer que yo me casé, uh -huh. que la única que yo me casé fue con mi madre. Mm. Eh, que he was the woman who fell in love since uh, he was a child, his mother. He has a special relation with, with her and he decided to tattoo her name. Do you still talk with your mother? She passed away. How long ago? Four years ago. There's another tattoo on the cheek. El punto ese que tengo acá es un punto... This tattoo means he was a diff. When another diff saw, see this, he recognized him. Yeah, you still a thief or that's in the past? Cada día y cada mañana le devuelvo, como que le devuelvo. He read about religion and God, so he tries to do something good, helping What's other helping people. Him? Every time he does something good for others, something good returns to him. And, and when he says thief, what does he mean exactly by that? Bajamos con Metra, Mini Uzi, Libre K47, y bajamos y apretamos. Yeah, he, he used to rob, rob banks. banks, but the transportation, money transportation, Other vans. Yeah, the security trucks are port. Can he elaborate? Yeah, he, he went with machine guns okay. and, and they robbed the, the machine, the, the bank transport. Cuanto uh, años? Like how many years ago? Hace cuánto? Y hace en el, el año eh, 2009 que hay preso. 2009 he went jail. Tuve una this. batida en el pilar, en el supervil en la plaza que hay video después googleó, nos agarramos a tiroteo, mataron a un compañero he mío. He got into a situation, into a gunfight, a gunfire, and uh -huh. there was a guy dead. ¿De, de ustedes? ¿De ustedes el muerto o de...? No, 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 eh, de la policía. Ah, oh, de la policía. Guy was abatido, killed. Policía. A cop was killed. Yeah, Bye. Uh, and they, they, they caught him and he spent... How many years? ¿Cuántos años estuviste en la calle? 20 años. 20 years he went to spend there. And he, uh, 20 years in prison. Oh, my God. Te ayudo. Wow, man. W were these done in prison? Yeah, ¿lo hiciste en la prisión? ¿Estás en la prisión? Todo, todo lo que acá que tengo. Acá. Look, man. Todo, todo. ¿En la prisión? Todo lo que tengo en la prisión. Todo. All tattoos were made. Todos los tatuajes que tengo en la prisión. Yeah. Yo uh -huh. me tapo con los guantes para que te veas por las manos, ¿ves? Todo tatuaje de la prisión. My God, man. El policía mató a mi compañero que iba manejando. Ah. Íbamos disparando con la plata. Ah, the police en killed his partner. Esas casas, mi madre era delincuente, mi mamá, y me las dejó. ¿Tu mamá era delincuente? Sí. No, Now he's telling me that his mother was a uh, criminal. Also. So what's quite interesting, we come out of that uh, slum area over there and just behind that building there and you cross and then you here you have the main financial district of Buenos Aires. One of the richest neighborhoods in the city is just there as well. Right slam bang next to it. That neighborhood there that we were just in. We were being told that it's safe and things and it's like got a bad reputation but just honestly speaking there was a lot of guys doing paco. Didn't feel 100% safe and also our local guide said there was like specific streets that we should be careful of. Although it might, might be safer than it used to be I wouldn't necessarily call it 100% safe. Really kind, friendly, warm, welcoming local people. Obviously Buenos Aires is like a huge destination for tourists from all over the world. It's not like this entire city is like dangerous or anything. There's no way that that's what I'm trying to say. There are some parts like any huge mega city that aren't the safest, but I mean a lot of it is completely fine and then, you know, I'm not breaking news by saying that. It's been one month. El gordo, look at this. Hermano, viste que no fue nada. Ya tú vas a ver cómo se va a poner eso después. As you can see, the reputation of that neighborhood doesn't exactly reflect the reality on the ground. Sure, it's dangerous in places. And at one point we did come across a dangerous guy because our guide knew who he was, so we just went down a different street. It is somewhat dangerous, but I think that the reputation of that neighborhood is 
far more drastic than the reality on the ground. But who knows, I'm just some guy that showed up and had a look around. Unfortunately, this is gonna be the only video I have of Argentina because after filming this video, I got extremely ill and spent almost a week in my hotel room just extremely sick. I'm not sure what it was, maybe flu and food poisoning or something, but it wasn't good. So exploring more of this incredible country, we'll have to wait till next time. There's so much more to this country, obviously, full of vibrant culture, the people are incredible. It is facing an economic crisis at the moment, however, the second worst inflation in the world. I believe it's around 120% inflation, so the money is just losing so much value so quickly people are really suffering in this country so I wish everybody in Argentina the best and hope that your country can climb back to some more stability a huge thank you to Lenny for showing me around if you want to check out Lenny's Instagram I highly recommend it he's a very talented street photographer here are some of his photos so check him out on Instagram here I also had some leftover clips from this video a couple of interviews I'll be putting them up for my patreons a link down below below for that. Huge thanks to all my patrons for the constant support and thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon for another trip and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening and good night.